In today's video, we want to look at how we can be able to do some analysis and we want to use the Plobit model. So we are going to see how to come up with the dummy variables to do the Plobit regression and also come up with the marginal effects and the interpretation. I have two libraries that I would like to use, the Tidiverse and the Fallen. Those are the two libraries that I would like to use. The next one, I want to see how I can lead an SPSS dataset. And uh, in this dataset, I'm very specific. I want to select the first 17 columns. So what will happen is after we are able to upload the data, we are going to view and see what type of data we are talking about. Uh, it's a fin access. I have the disability, yes or no. Do you keep money? I disagree or agree. Do you have a saving plan? Agree, disagree, neither agree or disagree. Do you draw on savings? It's either zero or one, so it's a zero. And uh, one for yes and no. There's a gender, there's a class, there's age, there's income, there's indication level and marital status among the so many other columns we are not going to use all the variables so what we're going to do is i want to select three of them i want to select advanced dfs gender and income advanced dfs and then i also have gender and income those are the three variables that you'll be interested in gender is there income is here advanced fs and uh so that's what we're going to do so um then i'm going to mutate i'm mutating and then i'm also filtering i want to remove the don't know refuse to answer from my income data and then i'll only select that so if i check now my new data set that is twin access one if i view fin access one i've only selected uh, three columns advanced dfs gender and income we can go further and see if i say summary fin access one uh, it tells me that uh, advanced is yes no gender is male female but income it says it's a character and for me to be able to work with that, I need to do uh, some changes on my data. And that takes me to the next level. I want to use a 3 dl and a deep prayer package. And whenever I have character, I want it to be converted uh, to the factor. And then uh, it, it drops any and a. So if I do a summary of the fin access, Sorry, I do the summary of the fin access to uh, now we can see our data in a better uh, picture. The income, they are now all the three of them are categorical variables. Those who earn over 30,000, they are 652. Those who earn between 101 and 1500, they are 3053, and so on. So now those are the three variables. And I want to see if advanced digital usage of digital financial services is influenced by gender and income now at this point i'll decide which one will be my base group when i'm creating the dummy variables both for the gender for the income and also for the advanced dfs so there i am now i want to create my dummy variables advanced dfs yes so uh whenever there is a yes i indicate one if it's no, then it will be indicated as zero. That's what basically we are saying. If else, for the gender, if it's one, you indicate as female, then male will be zero. For the income, I'm using one, one to 1500 as the base. And therefore, if you look down here, 101 to 1500 as the base, as 53 people. So all the others will be with reference to that uh, specific one. So if it's above 30,000, 
I put 1 and a 0 if it's between 15 or 1 and 3,000. I put a 1 and 0 otherwise. And that is how we normally create our dummy variable. So if I execute that, and we'll be able to, to and then we'll be able to get our dummy variables. Then the next step I did was now to put them into a data frame, fin access 3. And actually I can view fin access 3 as my third data set. And uh, that is what we have for the income. We have one, two, three, four, five. Uh, there were six of them. Gender, I have only one. Advance, I have one. Income, I have five of them. Now, this is what happens. If we look at uh, income here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. One of them, so the number of dummy variables is k minus one. So we'll have five dummy variables. For gender, we have male and female. So they are two. So it will be two minus one. So I'll have only one column. And for advanced DFS will also be one. And that's exactly what we're getting in this data that we have here. So it's either a zero or a one that I'll be working with. Once I've created my dummy variables, I put them into a data frame. The next step is to develop my Probit model. And when we look at what we have, Probit underscore model one, we use the GLM. I said advanced DFS, yes, as the Y variable, and then gender female plus income 1501 plus 3000 to 7500, 7501. Then I put all the variables. Then I reference the data. Data is equal to fin access 3. Family is equal to binomial. Link is equal to probit. So if I execute that and get the summary of the model, that's the results that I'll get. It tells me that uh, all the variables are statistically significant. We can see here, gender, the female, is significant. Now, what we see is that the intercept is negative, the gender, female. So when a person is a gender, uh, whose gender is female, we reference to a male. So a female has a uh, 4 points, 0 0.046 points higher chances of be, being a DFS user compared to, uh, to a male. The same case, our reference was 101 to 1500. It shows that these, all these have elevated use of a DFS. So as your income increases, you have a higher chance of being a DFS user. Now, these are the Z scores uh, that we get from Probit. So for making your interpretation slightly easier, what we normally extract is what we call the marginal effects. And I use the library marginal effects to be able to do so. So if I say library, then I get the MFX and I get the output, which might take a few minutes as we wait. What we get are the probabilities and they are so easy to interpret. So, what is the effect telling me here? It's telling me that a female, uh, a unit increase in female compared to a male has a 1.7% probability or chance of being. So again, female have a higher chance. A person earning over 30,000, 30,000 and above has a 44% chance of being a DFS user when you compare to the person who is earning between 101 and 1500. So we can see also the probability of being a DFS user increases with increase in income. And again, we can see the p-values here, they are all statistically significant. So that's how I would be able to, it's easier for me to interpret the probabilities based on uh, the marginal effects than taking the actual profit model and trying to interpret the estimated values because this is a 44% chance. For 15,001 to 30,000, they have that 3.34% chance. So there is an increased probability of them using DFS compared to somebody who is earning 101 to 1,500. 
So that's what we have about the marginal effects. The other thing we could do is we could uh, load in the desk tools, the disk tools, and uh, what this does, it gives you the R squared value. And what do we have in R2, R2 model? It shows you the, uh, the, how much are uh, the, the independent variables explaining the dependent variable. By Coxnell, it is 4.8. By Negkak, it's 6.6. .6, and McFain is 3.7%. So the, the, the explanatory powers of gender and income are very low on uh, an advanced DFS. Then finally, we would want to find out is a null model better than the model, the full model? And that's what we do. So here I'm getting my null model. Yeah. And then I come here and compare the null model that I have here, that is on line 92, with the probit model that I have in line 72. And I want to find out is there a significant difference between the two models? If yes, then it shows that it will prove to us and we can see that it is actually significant. It tells us definitely the full model is better than the null model. Then that is very important because you might realize even after inserting your gender and income, the model does not improve. Then if it doesn't improve, then it's not an appropriate model to use. But we have seen that it is by that uh, simple test. So what have we said? Well, the first thing I did here was to clean up my data, but the first step was to import the SPSS data into R. Then I selected the columns I needed to use. I cleaned up the data on income because I realized it needed some cleanup. And then I went ahead and removed the NAs so that I have only entries that have values. Then I moved ahead and created the dummy variables. That was the, the next step that I did so that now I could be able to easily interpret my results when I do the regression model. So I put them in a, a data frame. I could have put them in the previous data frame, but I decided to create a new one. Then I did the probit model regression, which is there. I got the results. I was happy with them. I did the marginal effects, and the marginal effects is a partial differentiation of the y of the dependent variable in reference to the independent variable. And it gives you percentages that are easier to interpret. Then the next step was to get the R squared and the chi that compares the null and the full model to see which one is better. So I'm sure you love the videos. Please do subscribe and thank you for watching.